AMT Ertl's 1968 Chevy El Camino SS396. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody and welcome back to another amazing 1968 model car unboxing video. And this week we have a special one for you. This is the 1968 Chevy El Camino SS396. Now many of you out there are wondering why I don't review new models, why I'm doing the old kits, and really it's because what I'm trying to do is, well first off, these are my own model kits out of my own collection, and I want to show them all to everybody. And the other thing is, okay, this may not be a modern kit, but every now and again these kits do get reissued and they get re-released and they get reboxed and they get new decals and they get some updates inside and everything else so it's kind of a to chronicle the history of some of these earlier kits and whatnot as well as so that you can know okay this one's coming out but what's the other ones look like and finally if you find these models somewhere on ebay or you know maybe i can get them in the store somehow or you know these kind of things and you want to know what you're looking at before you go and spend the money on this thing <laughs> you know because some of those kits out there they're maybe less than what you expected because some of them are promotional models so they'll just have a flat pan in there or whatever they won't be interesting so i'm offering everyone out there all you guys uh, a little glimpse underneath the box itself to see exactly what you're going to get before you maybe lay down like, oh, I don't know, maybe someone wants $80 for this and there's only three pieces inside. You don't know. So you come to me and you look and you see, hey, that's what's in there. Cool. I'll spend the 80 or whatever, you know. So without further ado and that big, long, drawn out explanation, let's go down to our showroom floor and see what's in here. Now, here's another cool car going back to 1968. This, of course, is the Chevy El Camino SS396, which was based on the 1968 Chevy Chevelle. Now, this model kit here came out from AMT in 1998. I do believe this is a first edition kit, if memory serves right. So if we turn this up, of course, we get a bit of detail. We got an SS396 V8 engine, rally wheels, and a highly detailed interior and chassis, which looks much like this from the side view. There's our wheels. And a little vinyl top on there. Turning this up, of course the end of the box it looks like the front of the box, but here's where the real business is at. I'll just zoom on in. We get that nice 396 SS engine with the huge air cleaner and the big valves which mean, or valve covers which mean business. And then we've got the back end showing the pickup bed so you got a car and a truck all in one nice package. So moving this back, turn it up around it this way, and just take a look at the contents inside the box. Wow. So here's all our great components right up front. And as you can see, we got the nice body here. Let's just pull that out for a minute. We'll take a quick look at this now and then get a little more detailed after. There's our full perimeter frame which is nice to see a frame separate. Then of course we have these components here, suspension bits and pieces. We've got our exhaust, manif or exhaust pipes, the drive shaft and our differential happening in there. Now I do believe this would have been in a bag, but there's our windshield and glass. And we've got our bucket seats, two pieces the floor pan and the gas tank and maybe the top of the dashboard to find out in the instructions. Interior with separate detailed panels and all these air conditioning hoses and whatnot. And we've got some more exciting bits, bits and pieces like tailgate stuff and something. There's the bed of our truck and the side panels. Oh, it looks like someone's starting on this one. There's our chrome grill. Maybe that someone should finish this thing. There's our brake drums and steering wheel and all that. There's an engine block that's been quite put together and painted. I don't know if they'd have a silver front engine cover. 
there's our built some pulleys. Okay, and then we have a dashboard and firewall radiator and a bunch of other goodies. A little 50 years of AMT. Oh, there's our hood. Very nice detail and of course instructions. And valve covers and tires and a whole bunch of other goodies stuffed down in the bottom of the box. All right, I'm going to clear this up and then we'll take a look at the instructions. Here's our instructions for the 1968 Chevy El Camino SS396. And they are a little short, so of course they fold out into a full page here. Now yes, somebody has built this, or started this model before, it wasn't me. I do believe I picked it up second hand. But most of the things should be in here, so let's just zip up into these pictures. There we go. So here we have our SS396 engine, and as you saw in my little opening, somebody built this. But it does have nice detail. These had the rockers in the cylinder heads, the intake manifold, the right and left hand side of the engine with the transmission together, separate starter, oil pan, and the front cover. And then here we've got a whole big array of stuff on this. Fan belts and pulleys. You've got your fan going in there. You've got... Uh, looks like a generator or an alternator then power steering pump yeah air conditioning for sure then as we move in we've got this nice chrome air cleaner and chrome valve covers and then we have our exhaust manifolds going together and then the whole pulley assembly will pop into that and then our carburetor and distributor then the wheels on this are very typical of this time frame, which are the hubcaps and wheels up front popping into the tires with the retainers and then the wheel backs. Getting up here, we have our interior with those two part seats going together, the center console with it looks like a shovel handle style shifter in there. And our dashboard and steering wheel all popping in. And then we get a nice treat for this era. Separate side molded door panels. Where if you have a real GM, you will note that the little door handles look like the real door handles. Because they were able to mold this on the flat instead of like the tub types of interiors. Where they have to try to mold it going down a sidewall. Ah. That's what this is. This is a little brace to go across for your rear window. <laughs> Whew, running out of oxygen. Okay, so now there's all the braces and everything for your interior. Ah, and that is the little panel that goes in behind the windshield. And then our gas tank is going to go up underneath this floor panel. We got a little tailgate there. And then underneath the car, we have these nice full perimeter frame, the firewall, the steering column, and then the uh, back of the El Camino will go on to the back part of the frame here. And you put in your exhaust pipes and everything, so it's all nice. Then we've got our little differential with all the springs and little cross braces, shock absorbers, and the rear differential cover. And then underneath here, there's our front suspension. Ah, and look, if you did this right, you could make posable steering on this, another great feature. There's cross braces going on the back. Um, actually, that's a stabilizer bar. And then we have the front top A-arm type suspension, and then our wheels will pop on. These, of course, are pegs so that those retainer clips can spin around on there. Just carefully flip this over. Here we have the undercarriage of the car. You're going to put your engine in and hook up your drive shaft. Then you've got your windows and a rear view mirror, which is plated, and our firewall going down here into the body, upside down. Now, if there were missing decals, that's okay, because from what I can see here, it's only the license plate. But we do have our rear bumper and the plate going in there, just to cover all this up. And I'm sure this has like a locking system in it, like the um, Oldsmobiles and the other kits that came out at this time. 
from this version of AMT. And then look at all the hoses in here. You get your battery. And I remember in this era, um, the reason why they, most of these model kits have the air conditioning is because AMT at the time were trying to upgrade their models. And that was one thing that was missing was all the air conditioning type things in earlier kits. So AMT made extra efforts to put in all the air conditioning components. Of course, your windshield washer bottle and power brakes with the brake booster on that reservoir. And then another nice thing is they give you a paint color callout sheet here. There's our front grille going together with the headlights and the hood and the rear view mirrors. So that concludes our look at the instructions. And now we'll take a quick look at our plastic components. Here we have our body shell for our 68 Chevy El Camino. It does have some very nice door handles molded on here, as well as some of the upscale chrome trim that would be on this car, on the real thing. Then of course it's got a nice little vinyl top on here, which is another neat little feature. There's a little bar here that you need to remove just to open up your pickup bed. It's got the vents right there, it should be underneath the hood, which I do believe was the first time that they had the hood come up to the window. Then of course we've got our radiator top here with the hood latch with a little hole for the catch. Got nice uh, detail lettering on there. I don't know how well you can see that. So we've got our turn signals molded in on the front fenders. Little El Camino script up here and then looking on our back tailgate could actually put a different color in here along where the SS is oh yes this would be the SS trim <laughs> there's our gas filler door on the side and again very nice work there is a little sunken area so that you can get a full glue grip on your rear view mirror sadly there's a little sink mark right up here in the sail panel which is unfortunate there isn't too much of a vinyl pattern on there, but it's still there, so filling it may not be too well. However, there is one good thing about vinyl tops from... See, I used to be a body man in an auto body shop, and when I took my training, the teacher there was saying the reason why they did the vinyl tops is because sometimes these cars did not have the best matchups when they... Uh, at the factory put the roofs on and whatnot so they'd use vinyl tops to cover that and make it look better so that's a look at our body let's take a look at some of the other bits here and here we have our frame for our el camino and with this being a pickup truck well pickup car el camino you would need a full perimeter frame on here for strength as opposed to having a unibody el camino so here's our nice frame that amt Ertl has provided us and look at the little detailing, small holes and whatnot. Not very much flash, if any at all. And again, good detail on here. I just love this era of AMT. And here we have some more of the body components. This, of course, is our SS hood. And then we've got our interior for the uh, pickup bed, I should say. And our side walls for the pickup bed as well, the fender wells. But look at the nice crisp detail on that. I mean, every rivet head and everything is in here perfectly. And then there's the pressed steel braces that would be in there on the back side. Of course, the nice wheel tunnels or whatever. But here there are some mold marks that you're going to have to remove with your number 16 hobby blade. But again, nice rib texture for support. And these little holes will make it so that it can mount on that frame. So let's just put this down here again. Look under the hood. You can see the nice cross bracing. Again, mold marks, but not too bad for removal. And then there's one bit I forgot when I was looking at the body. I forgot to turn it over and show you guys that it has a full headliner in here, which is very nice. But again, there's mold marks, which will be you need to take care of with your number 16 hobby blade. So there's our components there. Let's take a look at some more. So here I thought I'd do a little double on this. So we have the back of our tailgate here with all its little support ribs, as well as the back of the front of the El Camino pickup bed 
So this, of course, would be right where your uh, pickup, right behind the rear window is what I'm trying to say. There's our front suspension with the lower A arms and the steering linkage and, of course, the sway bar. Our gas tank here, whoops, the brace for the interior, and then the floor pan chassis. So bringing this up to the camera again, you can see the nice detail on there. Again, a bunch of little mounting holes and whatnot. Pegs for sitting on the frame. Look at that gas tank. It's very nicely done. Just excellent detail back then. There's our floor pan. A lot of mold marks on there, which will have to be taken care of. But you do get this nice little mat in there, rubber mat, to uh, protect your heels of your shoes from going into the carpet. And there's your brake pedal right there. And then looking at these components, you can see a nice crisp detail, just like the real thing, only smaller. Back of that wall and our tailgate. Let's turn this over. So there you got your ribs again and a little mold mark which you have to take care of. So again, nice work. I just love these things. Now here's three parts trees, but they all relate to the suspension components and drive line. So here we, except for this one, <laughs> that's the steering wheel. But here we have all our front components, the springs, the shock absorbers, um, the kingpins, and then we have the wheel backs, the muffler, or exhaust pipes, pardon me, the drive shaft, the differential, the exhaust rear bits with, of course, our mufflers, and then we have the front sway bar, and or the rear sway bar, pardon me, and the rear components, the springs and whatnot. And then these are the retainer clips. So just a quick look at some of these. There's our backs, and they do have that the uh, discs in the back, four-way drum brakes, it looks like. And then the differential, looking nice. And on the other side, there's retainer clips and all that. Not too much for uh, mold marks that need to be relieved, but there's our suspension bits. Now this part's tree, had the engine block not been built, would have all the engine components in here and whatnot, but because someone started on it, those have been removed. What we do have left is the radiator with the fan shroud molded on, the center column, the dashboard, the firewall, license plates, radiator hoses, the steering um, linkage, or the, the shaft. There's our brakes there and an AC Delco battery. So let's just take this up, up into the camera here. I'm going to turn it over. There are a couple of mold marks on the back of that support. Not too much happening on the back. Sort of like a <laughs> mullet. No, anyway. All the business is up front here. So what we have is all this cool detail going on. There's our console there. This is an automatic car, so the shovel handle and our radiator. So there you go. Here we have the remainder of our interior components. And here, of course, we have the great separately molded door panels. This looks just like my 72 Oldsmobile with the uh, armrest with the door opening lever right there and then window winders and all the rest. Now because these are molded flat they can actually make the window winders look like a real GM window winder which is cool. Window crank I guess. And then we have our air conditioning components and we've got our seats with the front and back so if there are any mold marks on the back, like on the Opel GT that I reviewed a little while ago, you don't get to see that big mold mark because the back here, which is nicely molded, covers it all. And look at that. It's got the right split in the right locations. And on this side, we've got the nice tuck and roll. There is a bit of flash on my example. See? But still overall quite nice. Got the Even got the little buttons in there. <laughs> And then here's our door panels, up close and personal. You can see that nice detail on there, just like the real thing. And then our uh, whatever's, <laughs> pardon me, no mold marks on the back that would interfere with anything, but always good to check. 
There are some little pins there for alignment. These are for our air conditioning, which is what I wanted to try to say, but couldn't get it up. So anyway, again, some very nice detailed parts. Next up, we got the glass components. There's not too much on here. There is the front windshield, and it does look like they tried to mold in some little sun visors up here. The rear window, four headlights, and the windshield washer bottle. So again, very nice detail on these parts. Now we get to my favorite part of all, which is the chrome tree. And as you can see, this chrome tree was set up for basically a factory stock El Camino SS396. There's no custom mags or anything on this. However, you do get the nice Corvette-style rally wheels on here, which were also on the Chevelles and some of the other Chevys of the time, of this year, I should say. And then we get our reverse lights molded in the bumper with our turn signals up top. Then a nice chrome grille here. It's even got the holes underneath, just like a real GMC bumper. With, of course, our, turns, our parking lights here and possibly turn signal lights, as well as the headlights. And these ones, of course, had the high beams in the center, just like my 72 Cutlass. There's the mirrors and the center reverse mir uh, rear view mirror and our little T-handle there. So let's just take a up-close look at the grill. And there you go. See all that nice detail in there. Even got the SS script right in the center. And then our, our rear bumper. And we'll just turn this here for our rally wheels. Of course, add some steel in there and black for the slots. Basically, that's about it. The back looks okay. Doesn't look like any mold marks would get in our way of anything. So there's our chrome. And here we have the SS396 motor as partially built by whoever owned this thing before. And as you can see, it is basically the engine blocks all together. So the right and left hand sides painted the transmission silver. And there's all your engine bits. You can see the nice rockers up here underneath the valve covers, chrome valve covers. These painted the exhaust manifold silver. This is the starter motor, the alternator, the belt and pulleys with power steering pump, which has got to be glued on, and the air conditioning pump. Now, one thing I noticed about this is that he never scraped the paint off of the contact surfaces. So if I wanted to, I could basically pull all this apart. You must remember, if you're using any of the model glue, to, of course, get plastic to plastic contact. Another thing I noticed is, like on the carburetor here, I don't know how well you'll see this, but he's left the seam line running right across, so always remember to get rid of your seam lines so that this thing looks like a real car and not a toy. And here we have our Goodyear Polyglass G70-15 tires, which have been in earlier AMT kits. These, of course, are bigger, heavier-duty tires, which would be perfect for the El Camino. And unfortunately, in the box, there is a lot of silver paint. This was from these tires rubbing against the transmission, I suppose. There is some nice tread pattern in here. All in all, these are really good tires that could be easily painted just to get white good year raised letters on here. And that completes our look at the 1968 Chevrolet El Camino SS396 by AMT Earl. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing review of the 1968 Chevy El Camino SS396. Next week, we'll be reviewing another car from 1968. So, in the meantime, if you want to see all these great videos and the ones I made in the past, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel here. Go in the back, the history, and see all the other model kits. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Let's get this video up to 100 likes so that it'll go way up there in the Google search engines and all that jazz. And until next time, everybody, good luck hunting up your old model kits and the new ones as well. And until next time, happy model building.